Hi guys, welcome back again to our channel Code Circuit. In today's video, we'll be learning about one very important algorithm called the count sort algo, which has been very popular in latest placement drives and it has been asked in lots of interviews, say TCS, Accenture, Cape Gemini, and so on. Okay, so it is a very important algo, and so we'll be learning about that today. And this will be the first part of the video where we'll be learning about the algo and in the next part we'll be learning about the code implementation. Okay. So before starting this video, I would like to request all of you to please like and share our videos with your friends and family and at the same time, please don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to our channel because that really motivates us to create more and more content like this for you. Okay. Thank you and thank you for all your support till now and I hope you will be supporting us in future as well. Okay. So let's get started. As I said, today's topic is the count sort algo. Let's know about the algo more. Okay. The first thing is it is used for single digit numbers. Okay. And the second thing about this algo is I've taken a simple array having single digit numbers and we can have 0 to 9 any digit 9 will be the largest and 0 will be the smallest and in my example you can see 6 is the maximum value okay it can be 9 also in any other example fine so the first step is to find the max in our example it is 6 okay based on that we have to create a count array the count array index will go from 0 to this max value okay so let us create the count array now Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and 6 okay and we will simply calculate the count of each element in the array how many ones how many twos and so on okay so if you see my example, we don't have any zeros, okay, so count of zero will be three, okay. If you go to one, we have two ones, okay, the count is two. If you look for two, we have two twos, the count is two. If you check three, three also we have one and two, fine. After that, look for four, we have only one four here so this is one five we have one and if you check for six we have one six okay now before going to the next part i want to ask you something suppose uh, this is a simple seating arrangement or a row where one person is already seated Okay, so for the next person, if this is position number one, the next person will obviously take the position two, and if there is one more, it will take he or she will take the position number three. Okay, so the current position is always dependent on the previous positions. Correct. Similarly, if there are one, two, three zeros, the position of one in the array will be always the next position. That is, you will take 1, 2, 3, this will be 4th position. Now, if we have 2 ones, the position of 2 will be 6 based on the previous positions. Point. So, this is called cumulative count. Okay. Because the current position is always dependent on the previous positions. Okay. That's why we have to calculate the cumulative count. Fine. As we have done in statistics while calculating the tally marks and frequency. You remember that, right? So just like the cumulative frequency, we will be calculating the cumulative count. Okay, so let me erase this part. Let's calculate the cumulative count. So 
zero, one, two, three, four, five, and one more six. Fine. But if you check carefully, for the first person, we don't have to bother about who is behind because there is nobody. Okay. For the first zero, I don't have to bother about the previous part. Correct. So this zero will directly come here. Okay. For the first one, we are not going to start calculating the cumulative count. So it will be directly coming here as zero. Okay. Let me take a different color now. This zero will directly come here. Fine. For the next one, it is zero plus two. The current is current plus previous. Okay. So this becomes two. Now again, 2 plus 2 is actually 4. Fine. Then it is 2 plus 2 plus 2. That is 6. And then again, 2 plus 1. That is 2, 2, 2, 1. This is 7. Then again, 1. 7 plus 1 becomes 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. Now this 9 should be equal to the total length of your array. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 9 elements in the array and this should be exactly equal to that. If it is not, then there is something wrong with your calculation. Okay. This is the cumulative count. Fine. Okay. Now, after that, we have to create the output array where we will store. And the size will be exactly equal to the input. Okay. The size will be exactly same. Fine. So, let's create the output array. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Okay. And please remember one thing because we took the cumulative count from the left side of the array, now while storing the output, we have to start from the end of the array, that is the right hand side. Okay. So, this is very important. Number six. Start from end or right hand side of the array. Okay. So if you see carefully, the first number in the end of the array is 1. Correct. Okay. Now let's try to find the cumulative count of 1. What is the cumulative count of 1? The cumulative count of 1 is 2. Okay. So because we have added the current with the previous, we'll subtract 1. 2 minus 1 becomes 1. At index number 1, we'll store this one. Okay. This is index number 1 in the output array. Okay. So we'll store this one here. Got it? Then next number. Let's come to this one. This is 3. Okay. The cumulative count of 3 is this one, 6. So 6 minus 1 becomes 5. At index number 5, we will store 3 here in the output array. Okay, this is our output array, this one, output array. And then let's go to the next number now, 4. So cumulative count of 4 is 7. So 7 minus 1 becomes 6. At index number 6, we will store 4. Make sense? After that, let's go to the next number. We understood it. Why we are subtracting 1? Because we have been adding the current with the previous. So we are subtracting 1. Next number now is 2. Let's see the count of 2. The count of 2 is 4. So 4 minus 1 becomes 3. At index number 3, we will store 2 here. Okay. Then next number. Next number is 1. Again, if you see carefully, the count of 1 was decremented to 1. So 1 minus 1 becomes 0. So at index 0, we will store 1 here. Okay. Then comes 5. Cumulative count of 5 is, if you see, 8. Okay. So 8 minus 1 becomes 7. At index number 7, you will store 5 here. Okay. Then we have 6. The cumulative count of 6 is if you see 9, so 9 minus 1 becomes 8. At index number 8 in the output array, you will store 6. Okay. Then we have 3. The cumulative count of 3 is 
if you see carefully it is 5 so 5 minus 1 becomes 4 at index number 4 you will store 3 and finally we are left with okay I don't need this finally we are left with 2 so obviously there is only one position left correct if you want to verify the count of 2 is 3 3 minus 1 becomes 2 so index number 2 will be storing this 2 okay here fine and now if you see carefully this is actually our resultant sorted array in the ascending order 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 5 6 see this this is the input array and we have this as our output array and this is the solution I hope you have understood the algo okay and talking about the time complexity the time complexity is big O of n plus this max value k okay because depending on that only we will be taking the iterations okay so I hope you have understood this if you like this explanation and if you want to get more videos like this please subscribe to our channel and if you have any doubts please don't forget to share your doubts in the comment section I'll be very happy to clarify them and please stay tuned for the coding part because in the next part I will be showing you how to implement the code and explain that okay thank you for watching and bye bye and happy learning